everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for SimonSaysStamp.com and I'm bringing to you 10 ways to create a resist. A resist is basically a barrier between your inks and the paper. I have played around with different product and I'll show you what I came up with. The first resist technique that I ever learned was to use Versamark ink on glossy paper. So here I have the Ranger stamping paper because it's a coated type paper and my Versamark ink. It's really simple to do. You just ink up your stamp with a Versamark ink. I keep a refill bottle for my Versamark ink and I refill it occasionally. So what you want to make sure is that you have enough ink. So once you have that stamp inked up, go ahead and stamp onto your paper. And like I said, I'm using a coated paper. This doesn't really work like on a Nina type paper. So either glossy or the Rangers stamping paper. Now I want this to dry completely before I go to add ink on top. I have allowed this to dry completely and I'll be using my Tim Holtz Distress Inks and also a blending tool and I'll go ahead and start putting my ink over top. You can see right away that it's resisting the ink so this is working out really well. The more ink that you put down the better the resist. It also works really well with darker colors. Heat embossing is another popular way to create a resist. So here I have stamped my image onto regular white Nina cardstock. And how I've done that is that I've used my Versamark ink with my stamp, I've stamped onto my paper, and then I've sprinkled it with my clear embossing powder, and then I heat set that. To color this, I'm using the Spiced Marmalade from the Tim Holtz Distress Ink Cube, and also my blending tool and I'm going over this and again you can quickly see how that resists that color. This has a nice finished look with the glossy shine from the embossing powder or you could iron this off between a piece of paper to clear off the embossing powder. Acrylic paints can also be used as a barrier between your inks and your paper and here I have the Tim Holtz brushed pewter distress paint and how I use this is I go ahead and put some down into a bowl or on a plate and then I use a piece of cut and dry foam and I pick up some of the paint and then I go ahead and apply it to my stamp. I don't use the paint directly to the stamp, it would be too much. But once I'm happy with the paint I go ahead and stamp it onto my paper. You can also use multicolor, so if you wanted to use a bright color paint and then go ahead and color over with another Distress ink, that would be really awesome. So here I'm just using the Peacock Feathers with my blending tool. And the more ink that I put on, the more you'll see the resist. It's a little bit faded in the beginning, but once you get going and you get a good concentrated amount of ink on top, you can finally see the resist. Another fun product to use is the liquid mask and this comes in a bottle with a fine tip applicator and I'll be just putting dots of the mask onto my paper and creating my own pattern. The liquid mask is really easy to work with. You can add either dots or squiggles or lines and just create whatever pattern that you'd like. I will be letting this dry completely before I add my ink on top. Okay, now that that's dry, I'm using my peacock feathers and I'm going to go ahead and swirl this around. This does stand up a little bit off the paper, so if you need to, you can go ahead and just blot your ink down by patting the blending tool right down on top of that masking fluid. And once you have your desired amount of color on your piece, you can go ahead and just rub off the masking fluid. And now you can see how well it resists the ink. Glossy Accents is another great choice to use as a resist and I like to use it just like I do the masking fluid to create my own pattern on my paper. I have put a fine line applicator tip on my bottle and this really helps it uh, come out in a really small amount. So here I'm just going to go ahead and add my dots just like I did the masking fluid and I can also create larger dots and smaller dots. Once I'm done creating my pattern, I will let this dry completely and then I can add my ink. Now that my glossy accents is dry, I'll go ahead and start using my spiced marmalade with my blending tool. 
I want to try to grab kind of the edge of the blending tool and get into those little small areas. The glossy accents does sit up a little bit higher than all the other masks that I've shown you. You can also pounce your blending tool directly onto your paper just to get into those little areas. The glossy accents gives you a really nice shiny look when you're all done, plus your resist. We don't want to forget about our stickles or any other type of glitter glue. This works really fun as a resist, so I've freeformed my dots onto my piece of paper and I've let this fully dry. What's fun about the glitter glue or the stickles is that some of the glitter in between the glitter will pick up the ink, but yet the glue that sits down close to the paper will resist it. So I'm going to go ahead and swirl this on just like I do with the other product. I'm not worrying about the glitter coming off. It has a really strong glue base. So once I'm done adding color, I not only have a great resist, but also some glitter. There are some really great multi-medium products that work as a resist, and this is a Faber-Castell glaze. And this is a real liquid form, and how I use this is I take a cut and dry foam piece, go ahead and dip it in, and then I use a saucer or a plate to kind of diffuse that or lighten it up. And then I use it through my stencil. Once that has had a chance to dry, you can go ahead and grab your ink and your blending tool and start adding your ink. And I'm just going to go around the edges here. I want some really light color, and then I'll start blending into the darker color. But now you can start to see where that glaze is resisting the ink. And it's really nice to be able to use your stencils as a resist as well. The glaze is designed to be able to trap other colors in there, so you could mix colors into your glaze and then use it with your stencil and then add secondary color on top. After I have added all my ink, you can really see that this does give you a great resist. Gesso has many great uses, and for this I'm going to try to do kind of a lighter tone resist, so it'll be a little bit lighter. Again, I'm using my cut and dry foam onto the plate and then through my stencil, and I've already added my gesso to my piece of paper. So I'll go ahead and get out my inks and start coloring. For this one, I'm using picked raspberry ink, and once I get going, I'll show you how it's going to give me just a little lighter color. So the gesso is going to pick up a little bit of the color, but not too much, and it'll just look like faded dots. So once I get a generous amount of ink on here, you'll be able to start seeing the resist. And now you can see the dots from the stencil, and it's a really nice soft resist. Matte mediums and glossy mediums also work well as a resist. Again, I've used my cut and dry foam on my saucer and through my stencil, and I've allowed this to dry completely. My gel medium, once it's set up, it acts as a plastic on top of the paper, and you can see that this is resisting really quickly. And again, it's super fun for me to be able to use my stencils in this way. It's something a little bit different than the norm. My final resist will be to use some texture paste or embossing paste. So I have my stencil here, I have my palette knife, and I've just spread out some embossing paste through the stencil and I've allowed that to dry. Depending on the paste that you use, you'll either get a complete resist if you use like a transparent one, or with this texture paste, I'm going to get a little bit lighter color. So I'm going to go ahead and go pretty heavy, it's pretty sturdy as you use your blending tool. And this is giving me lighter dots from what the ink is on the background paper. I've put together a card using some of the circles that I've used with my resist, and added some strings and knots to look like balloons. And to finish things off, I've added a sentiment partially stamped on the card and then heat embossed with white embossing powder on a black strip of paper. I hope I've given you some inspiration ideas on how you can do resist techniques with various products. And as always, thanks for watching.